The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you who began a good work are going to continue that good work. And I believe God gave us a a significant word that was kind of off the notes today. Well, those are usually the kind of words that God gives, off the notes, um, off of the notes. And so, Father, we just pray that you stir that up within us today and release it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Here's one of the words that I believe God's given this morning. The message, by the way, is how to get God in the loop. And we'll explain that later. But um, I believe that there has been a prophetic word that really, really uh, witnesses my spirit that this is going to be a year for marriages. And I mean that in several different ways. One, existing marriages are going to be given opportunities to be restored to the purposes that God had for them. There are single people that are going to find uh, their true God mates in in the Lord, and it's going to be to fulfill God's purposes. And the hindrance to that happening is self-imposed criteria and structures made up in vain imaginations. Vain imaginations can become a house of thoughts that actually interfere with God's plan and his purposes. Uh, Even the contradictions in life to show you that you desperately need the person that and to be the person that God made you to be and in that the relationship will take and unfold the way it should. And I believe that uh, the contradictions have to be dealt with. By contradictions, I mean, for instance, God is putting people together now for his purposes, not so that, oh, he would be good for me, says the girl, or the girl says, oh, you know, or the guy says, she would be good for me. It's going to be more for the kingdom purposes that he puts the two together. Like I said, even my, my pastor friends, when I married Jennifer 17 years ago, my pastor friends, and these are people that liked me, they said, without her, you're nothing. <laughs> but you know what? There's a supernatural truth to that. Because when God brings two together, he makes something that never existed before. It's like a new creation. Just like when you were born again, it's a new creation. It's something that never existed before. And look at all the books we've got written that Jennifer basically took down uh, the notes and the details. I can't even type. If you, ever, if you ever get a response from an email or text message from me, it's K. Sometimes okay if I'm really, if I had my coffee. See you, thanks. When people don't type, they don't give long emails. And then we get people from around the world sending these nine page emails with questions. I'm going, oh, this is, you're gonna have to talk to me in person. There is no way I'm gonna answer four pages of email when I don't type. You know how long that would take? And I'm not going to impose it on Jennifer because right now she's editing books uh, where the reaper's overtaking the sower. And uh, we've got, she works from early in the morning to late at night. Which, speaking of books, by the way, Charisma Magazine, for those of you watching by Ustream, uh, most of the people in the church know, uh, they've, uh, Charisma Magazine in the May issue entitled Walking in the Supernatural featured our book among seven uh, Uh, ministries, uh, music, as well as books that were written. That's the May issue, Walking in the Supernatural, Charisma Magazine. Featured Deep Relief Now. That's this book. This is the cover. Is this like a commercial? Isn't the way you hold it in a commercial? This is the cover. Okay. And also, uh, if you've read the book, uh, please, uh, on Amazon.com, write a review. Appreciate that. Thank you. And... uh, also, the book that was released in December of last year. Some people haven't even gotten to this yet. Um, we have a very, very, very high quality DVD set that teaches us as a course. And it would be highly recommended because you would be getting the equivalent of what we used to teach as a module one, module two. You're going to get a module one and a module two out of this book just about. Uh, it's a very in-depth. We go beyond the book, of course, in the DVDs, and that's uh, good for small groups as well as churches. Okay. 
And we've got the power, supernatural power of peace will be out near the end of this year. And Jennifer's working on that now. We're also working on the biology of faith and belief. We don't have a title for that yet, but it's basically the physiology of how getting God in the loop uh, literally affects your physical body. 80 to 90 percent of, of physical ailments are emotionally based in the churches until now. The church has not dealt with emotions as a primary concern. It was kind of a problematic area that you just ignored. You know, emotions were for women. Says every man who is in stress. <laughs> Let's define stress this morning. Stress means, men, you are being emotionally controlled by people and circumstances rather than the Lordship of Jesus Christ because you cannot be stressed and trust God at the same time. So there, now, send us some emails on that and, and uh, I will answer you yes, no, or maybe. Uh, okay, but I believe that it's important that what is the major paradigm shift that's literally gone around the world to, uh, to un in, a, in a very unique way actually uh, accelerate growth in the body of Christ and that's what we're all about, maturity, uh, not milk. You can go and just about anywhere and get milk and if that's what you need then get it. But right now we want to ex bring an acceleration to spiritual growth and maturity to the body of Christ and that means it's going to challenge you. And the way I want to challenge you today in light of what I feel God was speaking is that, is that uh, not just because my son's getting married but it was literally at the same time that God is saying that this is a year where uh, they're going to be the um, it's going to be a breakthrough in relationships and all the way around. But primarily, I want the single people to listen to this as well as married people. There is a, a contradiction that needs to be brought down as a stronghold. And uh, Jennifer and I got married. We knew that prophetically God put the two of us together for his purposes. However, Jennifer had a stronghold of basically not doing public speaking under absolutely no conditions would she do public speaking. It was just, that's the way it is, that's the way it's always been, that's me. You'd be surprised how many things you've got in your life where you say, that's you. And single people, you've got, you've got criteria for a mate that literally needs to be dissolved. And you need to get back down to the basics to where the only criteria is God. You know, I, I watch this and I don't want to get into some of these television things, but this Match.com and all that other stuff too. You know, they build based on, on information about you, and that's, that's interesting, but that's as far as it goes for me. Because in reality, God puts people together in a far greater insight than anybody can by documenting information, their likes and their dislikes. Your likes and your dislikes can actually interfere with your destiny. Did you know that? One of the greatest... One of the greatest hindrances to fulfilling the purpose of God is basically your likes and your dislikes sabotaging what God has. And I, I always found it uh, highly commendable and was very confident when Jason and, and Gwen picked their date. I was highly confident in his decision because I've watched him from the time he was a little boy with decision making and his attitude is I will do whatever God tells me to do and I will do whatever he tells me to do. There was no as long as. How many of these single women have lists of criteria for a mate? And how many have lists of things that are actually vain imaginations? Even if they're nice in and of themselves, they can keep you from your destiny because you're trying to, you're trying to mold out of your own control something that may never happen. And, and so I've got a word. This is going to be your year if you can die to vain imaginations. I don't care how good they are, vain imagination. Married people, I'm talking to you too. That there are certain things where you're going around the same old mountain. Well, guess what? You're going to continue to go the same old, same old mountain until you get God in the loop. Isn't that the problem with the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness? They went around and around in a circle. You can dig a pretty deep groove in there. You can dig such a deep groove going around the mountain, you can say, well, that's the way I am. But that doesn't mean that shouldn't be the, way, the first thing that needs changed in your life. So find out, what is that same old, same old, and why am I going around and around? I think I'm available, but in reality, your likes and your dislikes have made you unavailable. And it's actually functioned as a deterrent. 
I can remember Jennifer going forth the probably a very short period of time before we met. She was exhausted. She was a uh, school psychologist going 70 miles one way. Left in the dark, came home in the dark. A single parent. Her, her late husband died of cancer, and for years she, she was a single parent with leaving for work, 70 mile commute one way in the morning, in the dark, coming home in the dark. All right, And she got to the point that after doing that for a, a three years, at the end of the three years, she says, I'm going down to Santa Rosa Beach for prophetic ministry. She said, I, I'm going to get somebody to pray for me. She says, because I am getting exhausted. And most people would quit before that. But she says, I'm getting exhausted. I got to hear from God. And one of the, one of the prophetic uh, uh, people on pr the presbytery called her forward and said, Jennifer, God says he will give you whatever you want. And oh, her heart sank. And it just dropped down. And she just said, oh, God, just wouldn't it be nice to have a little house with a white picket fence and just the pressure be gone. And then the Jennifer that I married, the real her, right in the midst of that despair, she said something rose up like a lion on the inside. That was her potential. And that lion rose up and said, no, God, if nothing but this stuff is all you've got for me, and if that is your best, I want it. She's not a masochist. She wasn't asking for problems, but she was saying, if this is your best, I want it. And it was shortly after that someone else prophesied to her immediately after that experience and said, step forward, drew a line on the floor and said, step forward and step into your destiny. And we met from that day forward, and you can read about it in the books. I'm not going to go into it. But I saw if this is the best you've got for me. What I saw is very few Christians are neutral enough in God to want what God wants. They want what God wants, but they want to tell God what it looks like as he needs our instruction. So I believe that this is, there, is a, there is a commencement of, of constructive criticism for the body of Christ to where we need to start dying to some of our structure, some of our thought patterns, our likes and our dislikes. We do not want them to interfere with our destiny. The only time I ever saw Jennifer get demonic was we were probably married a very short period of time. One year, and I was asked to do a seminar, and I says, we are going to do the seminar. And she went, I am so demonic. <laughs> frightening, just frightening to watch her and her, that's about all you'll get out of her, too. 17 years, that's the most I've seen of her demonically. <laughs> I am so demonic. And I'm <laughs> so, you don't want to laugh, but it's like, so you're so demonic about what? You don't understand. I cannot, well, even in graduate school, if, if I had to give an oral presentation, my skin gets cold with fear, and I get frozen, and I can't talk. I thought, well, that's a little, maybe if I prayed in the spirit for about 20 hours, I'm going, oh, no, 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 we're not going that route. We're not going to pray in the spirit 20 hours. It's so funny, though. What do you mean? We are going to do a seminar. I don't do public speaking. Yet in reality, and I believe this, this is a thus saith the Lord for anyone who hears this message, that nevertheless, if she would have stayed in that belief system, which to her was factual because she had proof. If she would have stayed there, we would not have fulfilled our destiny. And she's a world-class speaker, in my opinion, and many other people's opinion. And, and I think that uh, her books, her teachings, her DVDs, her CDs, uh, long after we're with Jesus, there's going to be people benefiting from it because it came from the heart of Revelation, and it's, and it's already changed a lot of lives. And... But God put us together for his purpose. My landlady, who supernaturally gave me a place to live when I came to Charlotte for free. $1,000 a month condo on Tiga K on the lake, fully furnished. She came up to me when I met Jennifer and she says, God is not giving her to you and you to her. God is putting you two together for his purposes. And I'm saying, 
Thus saith the Lord, today such a day that is happening again. And God told me a year ago that uh, Jason came. He said, in one year's time, he says, I'm going to turn him around. I'm going to redeem your firstborn. He's my eldest son. I'm redeeming your firstborn. And afterwards, he's going to be, after, he, after that one year, he's going to meet the person. He's going to be in the right frame of mind and the right spiritual condition to meet the person that God has for them. And I've known that for years and years and years. And therefore, I have very much confidence when he picked today as the day which, by the way, weeks ago it was going to be raining today. There's zero chance of rain today. I think that God knew what day it was when he gave him that day, and it's an outdoor wedding. I, that would help, right? Although we could do it in umbrellas. He wouldn't know the difference if it rained or didn't rain. But I do see him as a prototype that what God is going to do is get, he's going to get us in the loop. There's a difference between getting God in the loop and you going around and around in a loop. And I believe there's a physiology to that, there's a spiritual truth to that, and there is natural, uh, a natural, supernatural way of life that involves that. And so I wanna kinda cover that a little bit. I don't think I'm going this second service, I'm not going with these notes or with the overhead or any of that other stuff. I just think I'm gonna go with this. But God's basically saying that there's a paradigm shift. And this paradigm shift is going to be learning how to get God in the loop for believers. I don't care if you've been a believer for 20 or 30 years. There's been a, a, a mistaken concept that the emotions are not necessary. And man has been trying to get his Bible knowledge stuffed down into his spirit. And most of the time when something really does happen spiritually for the better, it happened more by accident than on purpose. The problem with by accident as opposed to on purpose is if you want more, you don't know what you did, you don't know how you did it, and you don't know how to get back there to have it happen again. And I say that's going to change. God's going to say, I'm going to begin to move on purpose and teach you how to on purposely connect with me and get in the loop. And basically what kind of stirred even today's message up was uh, it's chapter 13 in our new book, Deep Relief Now. I was reading that and I says that chapter 13 is basically a, a, a revelation that is a mystery revealed that needs to be reinserted into the body life of the church at large. The church at large needs to know how to get God in the loop. That it's a God story, it's not about your story, it's God's story. When you get into God's story, so to speak, you're in the loop, then all of a sudden everything starts working out. But too many people are trying to make the make it happen according to their criteria. So let's just stop right now and say, first of all, this has nothing to do with your conscious mind. This has to do with allowing God to search your heart, the non-conscious. 400 billion processes going on in the non-conscious, 2,000 in your conscious. Uh, it's not about what you think. David was smart enough to say, God, search my heart for anxious thoughts and hurtful ways. In other words, you search that non-conscious there. When you go into prayer, you're asking the God that knit you together to do the searching, not you thinking. You thinking is futile. Your thinking has made mental strongholds that are actually interfering with your destiny. But when you let God search the heart, let him pick the cherries, he will put his finger on the things that are necessary to come down. Strongholds of thinking, houses of thoughts that need to come down. So there's a feeling thought loop that has been basically ignored by the church. In other words, your recent discoveries in, uh, by scientists and, and the kids in school will be learning this. We didn't learn this in school. But the emotions control your thinking and the emotions control your choices. And that thought alone could turn you upside down. And it was Jonathan Edwards during the First Great Awakening that basically, though he was an intellectual, said that the, the emotions are the gateway to knowing God, that he saw the people that changed very little had a cerebral Christianity, but the ones that were impacted by the power of the Spirit cried, wept, repented. He saw that when the emotions were touched by God, he also saw f in the future change. He saw them transformed. He saw them grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God, unlike those who insisted that they weren't necessary, who just settled for mental assent. 
Mental assent's not good enough. If mental assent was a good enough all by itself, then Romans 7 wouldn't even exist, would it? The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, those things I do. But if you understand that the power source behind your thinking and your feeling is the emotions, then what we need is for a supernatural exchange to take place in those emotions. And that we've got to quit saying that that's an unnecessary area, that that's for women. Quite frankly, women, you need to know it better too, because emotions weren't just there to be expressed, they were there to be healed and brought into the supernatural fruit of the Spirit. That's why God gave you emotions. It was for the fruit of the Spirit. Instead of the fruit of the Spirit being a mystery and then just through judging duty, trying to live a a Christian life. But basically, the necessary approach is this is Jennifer's story. I want to read Jennifer's story because she, she likes this. She saw when I taught her that you have to do it from here instead of from here, she basically came up with the illustration. I said, if this is the door, this is what you opened up down here, your Bible heart, not this one, not this one. Jesus didn't stand at the door of your head. But when you opened your Bible heart, all of a sudden the light bulbs went on for Jennifer and she started processing uh, spiritual truths that she had known her whole Christian life. But now all of a sudden it was working simply by opening the door of her heart. And here's what she came up with. If I wanted to get inside my house, I could drag a ladder around the kitchen window, climb up the ladder, force the window open, try to crawl through the window without knocking the ladder over. Or if I decided it was too hard to break in that way, I could just give up and pitch a tent in the yard instead. Sadly, many believers just give up and camp outside of God's best for them. Certainly, God doesn't want us to give up. But how can we get in the house? Wouldn't it be easier to just unlock the front door and step inside? It would definitely require less time and less effort. Do you believe there's people, when I say they're going around in a circle, what did the children of Israel do in the wilderness? They camped going around in a circle. You can camp outside of the truth, loving the truth and saying you love God, love the truth, but you can camp and go around and around in a circle and miss your destiny. Destiny always includes connections. Destiny always includes people. I don't know why this is so complicated because in the church we have people that are independent and they think they're grown up because they're independent. Well, independent is a step up from being sickly dependent. But you haven't arrived. Interdependent means that God wants you to fulfill your destiny, and destiny always includes other people. Interestingly enough, it includes success. The things that our children are taught in school to be. Be a success. The trouble is, success in and of itself can operate outside of the loop, outside of the God story. Success can be totally selfish. There are many successful people jumping out of tall buildings that hadn't produced a lot of happiness in their life. But destiny always includes success because God's got a plan for you and he's got works for you and he wants you to walk in them. But when you walk in them, God has to be Lord. And I think I'm going to stop even at this point. I want the single people watching to say, I don't want something to come to interfere with your destiny. I don't know how you're going to get that attitude, but I can at least pray and give you a kind of a primer to get the kind of attitude that Jennifer had. Nevertheless, instead of my criteria, if this is the best you've got for me, God, I'm going to live for you and serve you all the days of my life. And if my life is wasted, it's your life to waste. If you could just die to all of those things that are actually idols in the heart, even the things that are good in and of themselves, they can still be an idol in the heart. And you can go from cistern to cistern, and those cisterns can be legitimate in and of themselves, but they can be idols that are interfering with the purposes of God. Wherever the purposes of God are not being met in your personal life, an idol has found, a substitute has found its place in your heart. Jeremiah 2, I believe 13, where my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain, and they've hewn for themselves cisterns or substitutes. There is no such thing as a vacancy in your life. If that need is not being met by God, you found a substitute. Something is meeting that need. And God says, I want to supply all of your need and get you walking in the plans and the purposes that I foreordained before you were born that you would walk in them. 
So you can walk in circles or you can walk in the plans and the purposes of God. You can enter into destiny or you can just make, make your life a life of circles never really reaching the destination. So I just believe that, Father, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that there is a time and a season to where we need to recognize that we are our own worst enemy with some of the preconceived plans and purposes that we have. No matter how noble, no matter how wonderful they sound, we made them up and they are vain imaginations. And vain imaginations can become a contradiction to the very plans and purposes that God has. How radical are you today? Are you radical enough to say, God, search my heart? Are you neutral enough to let God search your heart? If that even frightens you, that's probably the beginning of entering into the work of the cross. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Help me to be willing to be willing, whatever it takes. But if you are willing to do his will, you shall know. Do you want revelation or not? Because progress will come by revelation. Revelation requires a willing obedience on your part. If anyone, John 7, 17, if anyone wills to do my will, he shall know whether it's of God or not. So Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I believe this is a day and an age that's been ordained by God for us to remove contradictions in our life, criteria, strongholds, ways of thinking, things that we call factual, things that we've even identified as who we are. I renounce any identity, any false identity, any fears, any, any criteria, good or bad, that has stood in the way of God's best for me. For I believe there's a new day dawning, there's day breakers, dawn breakers, that are being released to shine afresh and anew out of your life. And God is putting people together to fulfill his purposes. There are existing marriages right now that are going to stand a a wonderful opportunity for healing as God would take some of the prejudged areas and have them repented of. I repent and receive forgiveness for prejudging areas when in reality you've been waiting for the other person to change when God's been waiting for you to die to your criteria of them changing. So, Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask for forgiveness. I receive that gift of repentance to, to, to totally transform on the inside, to see things more from your perspective than from my own perspective in the days ahead, to ask by the power of the Holy Spirit that you break, you break into that loop through forgiveness and repentance. Break into that loop and get into that And let me bring down every thought and criteria in Jesus' name. How many have seen those, uh, those, uh, even those commercials for uh, matchmaking and stuff? Basically, the criteria is you fill out a list. You know what's scary about that is you can find temperament that way, mutual temperament, but you can't find character with that, nor can you find the Holy Spirit's will in that. I find that stuff actually standing in the way of some people's future happiness because you that's a man-made structure. And I'm just saying that what God wants to do is break into that. Now, if God used that, that's a different story. But you would have to be neutral enough to know if God was using something like that. Because divine appointments are divine appointments are divine appointments. But we're living in a time when God's saying destiny is going to be fulfilled. Listen, to single people. Destiny will never be fulfilled without other people. And so you're going to have to see if those other people are part of your destiny or not, or just part of your likes and dislikes. If they're just part of your likes and dislikes, you will go around in a circle for a long time. I read a secular article uh, recently. I gave it to uh, Cliff and Stina to look at because I, I was, it was a secular article about a woman that was asking her friend to please... Uh, Answer me, why, why am I not getting in relationship? I am out there. I'm a beautiful woman, and I'm out there. And before he answered it, all of a sudden he says, she's not really out there. He said, well, would you consider doing this? And she said, no, why would I do that? Well, would you do this? No, I would never do that. And she had a cr- list of criteria that literally confined her that while she thought she was out there, she was not out there. 
People have fears of intimacy to such a degree that they build up walls and criteria around them that nobody else could penetrate. No one could ever fit that criteria if they tried to. This has got to end because God wants to put something beautiful together and he's bigger than your likes and your dislikes. And he's not going to make you miserable. That's one of the best tools of the enemy is they, oh, if you just take what God wants, he'll make you miserable. I wouldn't even serve God if that was my impression of God, that he's out to make me miserable. You make yourself miserable with your criteria. God wants to give you life and abundant life. So, Father, help us get into this day on Mother's Day. I, I like that 1995 uh, on Father's Day. Boom. 1980, Mother's Day. Boom. 2014, Mother's Day. Boom. And I believe it's going to be a relational thing for married people, for people that are, that are single. God's going to basically put you into supernatural relationships, but you're going to have to be neutral. You're going to have to do like I did when I told Jennifer, I says, even when we planted this, uh, this little church, we said, basically, you treat everyone as if you're entertaining an angel. Because divine appointments come in all sizes and all packages, and you don't, it's not about your likes and dislikes. You, you have no idea who's who. But you go, God's plan in this invisible realm is divine appointments become divine connections. Divine connections, if you cooperate, become divine, really divine order, an orchestration that God is putting together for a corporate expression of purpose. I'm so glad that Jennifer dealt with her stuff. <laughs> I'm hoping you deal with your stuff. Huh? No, God, if this is the, you imagine driving hours to go for prophetic ministry, having the prophet say, Jennifer, you can have whatever you want, and then something rises up in her, and she turns that down from her likes and her dislikes to I want what God wants. When I fell in love with Jennifer, this is my son's wedding day, so I'm getting, I'm getting mushy, mushy stuff. But when I fell in love with Jennifer, I actually had a, my first fear that I had to pray through. That in all honesty, I never feared loving anybody more than myself until I met Jennifer. I scared myself. What if I overrode God for Jennifer? And you know what, you know what this woman said? She stood up and said, don't you ever override God's will for me. What a woman. That just made me love her all the more. I'm going, that's right. She said, because God called us together for his purposes. And that I have not lost my identity. She has not lost her identity. But when God put the two of us together, there was my entire life of revelation that was be, up until now was always told that it's too subjective. You can't teach anybody that. She documented it. She was my pupil, my disciple. She learned it and documented it and reproduced it so that children, young and old, are being blessed by it. That was our purpose. I couldn't do that by myself. Without her, I, it's just like Jesus. I am nothing. And her without me would have had nothing to write about or document. So we were necessary for each other to accomplish the purposes of God. I want that for everybody. Don't you want that for everybody? And for the single people, it doesn't mean you have to get married. It simply means that the single people, God has placed the solitary in families for relationship. And that if you're in the right place at the right time, you're going to find a satisfaction and a fulfillment. And most don't believe that. Most figure they have to find it for themselves or it won't get done. Well, how's that been working for you? Really? Because there's a criteria that's standing in the way. In some cases, you won't let go of that criteria, and you're going to continue to go around the mountain over and over and over again. I want God in the loop. If God gave us a revelation how to get God in the loop, and you know what he said? He said, start with the emotion. Don't start with the thoughts. The rest of the church is trying to take their thinking and change their emotions. Good luck. Psychology hasn't worked very well like that, and the best of them have agreed that the, it's difficult to get the emotions under control of the thinking. It's because you're going in the wrong door and it'll turn the church upside down when they open the door of their heart to Jesus and they find out that when you let the God emotions, the fruit of the Spirit rule, that he's in the loop 
And all of a sudden, it's the same way you got saved. It's the same way you're expected to live. Getting God in the loop. So we're all connected. Whatever you do to the spirit affects the soul and affects the body. Whatever you do to the body affects the spirit, the soul. I mean, we're all connected. You can't disconnect that. So therefore, if you are going to be physically healthy, prosper and be in health as your soul prospers, then you need to let the spirit of God, Jesus Christ, rule the emotions, and it will change the thinking. It will renew the mind. Even those scriptures they've quoted you to you, all of us for years, that be renewed in the spirit of your mind and be transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. That Greek word is nous, N-O-U-S, which means mind, will, and emotions. If all three are not touched, it does not facilitate change. But the church has basically said those pesky emotions do away with them. Well, I'll tell you what, God is bringing to the forefront in the next awakening people who are going to have emotions so totally yielded to God that the fruit of the Spirit, they're going to be so impacted by God that they're going to find health and healing in their physical body. If 80 to 90% of physical ailments are emotionally based, how much better would it be to have the God emotions flowing through your system? That God created you an emotional, a thinking, feeling, choosing being, but those feelings were created for the fruit of the Spirit. Before Adam sinned, that's what they felt in the garden. Love, joy, peace. The kingdom of God or the rule of God is righteousness peace and joy all three of those are emotions do you know that righteousness is an emotion I have to keep saying that one righteousness under the new covenant is love and action so the kingdom of God is love and action peace and joy in the Holy Ghost all three of those are emotion you want to skip the emotions and you live in a cerebral Christianity you're going to get into dead works and drudging duty and get burned out and that's what we did when we traveled. Always ministering to burned out Christians who are highly gifted, but burned out because they didn't know how to bring the will of God into a divine romance of my will and his will and the peace of God ruling that God's ruling. Jesus is Lord. Everything we're teaching is how to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life in a practical way. So Father, we just thank you this Mother's Day that you who began a good work are going to continue that good work and that God is going to break into the loop and that emo cognition and emo volition the emotions rule we're going to give our emotions to God we were bought with a price we have no right to keep them from God we have no excuse that is valid but our emotions our emotions belong to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And to the degree that we walk in his peace we walk in the shalom of God. To the degree you walk in the shalom of God you have health you have relationship, you have all things intact and nothing's missing, you have relationship, you have friendship, you have no injustice and no pain. Our English word peace really doesn't do it justice, does it? No injustice, no pain, all things present, nothing missing, fellowship, love. Father, we just thank you that you who began a good work will continue that good work. And in the days ahead, there are people going to be walking in the supernatural peace of God. The God emotions of the kingdom are going to rule. And they that know their God are going to be strong and do exploits. And the enemy is going to do his best to wear out the saints of the Most High God. That will always be the strategy. If he can't get you to backslide, he's going to try to wear you out with religious duties. Where God's saying, I want you to be strong, know your God, and do exploits. They that wait upon the Lord are going to renew their strength. They're going to run, not be weary. They're going to walk and not faint. That kind of strength is not by might nor power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God's going to raise us up on eagle's wings, and he's going to show us to accomplish more with less effort. He's going to teach us to, 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 um, to move in peace regardless of external uh, circumstances and people. He's going to teach us that the God of peace crushes enemy beneath our feet. Doesn't mean peace is the absence of conflict. It means peace is superior. Peace will calm the storm. Peace, the God of peace, his kingdom is a kingdom of peace. Sar Shalom, the God of peace, whose kingdom is being expanded and continuing to expand. That peace, there is no end. And that peace is swallowing up anarchy and chaos. So Father, I want to see these young people and marriages I want to see divine connections that are holy you, holy 
and completely you. And for those that are already connected and there are walls, let Christ himself, who is our peace, make peace in those relationships. Quit looking at the other person to change and look within for a criteria that is that needs to come down like a wall, dividing walls. So Father, right now, I receive forgiveness for any walls and relationships that I have placed, regardless of the other person's behavior any walls of my own making, for even for self-protection. I, I'm going to let the peace of God guard my heart and my mind. No demon of hell can penetrate the peace of God or the fruit of the Spirit. Therefore, no more self-imposed limitations and guards uh, uh, around my heart uh, against people and circumstances. I'm going to allow the power and the presence of God to rule and crush the enemy beneath my feet. Guard my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. Rule in my heart. Guide me into all truth as I trust in him. Gather, because in the days ahead, there's times of chaos, at times of perplexity. In the end times, there's going to be times of perplexity. And the Spirit of the Lord would say that in that perplexity, man's running out of answers. He's going to turn to the church for those that have the answer, those who have peace in the midst of the storm. And they're going to wonder, how? How is this happening? Why do they have peace in the midst of this? I need what they got. And the peace of God is going to gather. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach good news, that preach peace, all of the doctrines doctrines of Christ are doctrines of peace. It will gather and it will ground you and rooted in kingdom. No other foundation other than the foundation of Jesus Christ, the King. You cannot be grounded in the kingdom without the King. And unless Jesus is Christ is Lord and the peace of God rules in your heart, there's been a departure and you're outside of the loop and you're going in circles. Father, we pray. We, we just uh, command in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for, for the eyes to be open for the door of opportunity that God is opening to the body of Christ even this day. God is saying you've been going in circles long enough. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time for behold a door is opening unto you and it's being made available to you to open a, open the door of your heart and God will come God's even opening a door in the heavens and saying come up hither for I am opening a portal even in this place yes even in this place and even by Ustream and even by Kingdom Life Church and in, in, in this uh, uh, tiny group a band of people God says I'm opening a door of opportunity for you to walk in and I want you to come forth I'm opening the door but you have to open the door on your side and the two opens I will open a door that no man can shut and prepare in advance for you God is swinging open the double doors Isaiah 22 22 I am opening a door that no man can shut no demon of hell no no nothing can stop what the plans and purposes that God has for you so father we just move forward and we we walk through that threshold I don't know once you stand to your feet if you're in here and if you're watching by Ustream, wouldn't hurt you to stand to your feet. I want you to do something that seems kind of childish, but God will honor it if he's directing it. And I believe that he's telling us to take, as Jennifer did, cross a threshold. Just take a small step forward like this and enter into the new plan that God. By faith, I just step forward into the new plan that God has for me. And this is a new day. And the power of God's coming right now in the name of Jesus. And I just allow it to happen. Just allow it to happen for his spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, even now. And embrace the hearts of these people present. Hold them, cherish them, care for them. And allow him, oh goodness, that is good. Let them be suddenly startled by the goodness of God. To be suddenly startled by the goodness of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's a fresh wind coming in, and he's just breathing on your heart ever so gently, but ever so powerfully. This is a new day, and I've crossed the threshold. I received forgiveness for any circles of my own making. And now God is creating a limbic loop a limbic loop, a Holy Spirit loop of relationship. And he is drawing at the earliest time possible. I'm speaking to single people now, those that are looking for a life mate, that God is bringing them as soon as he prepares their hearts and as soon as your heart is prepared at the earliest convenience, God will bring it to pass. And that even Jason's a first fruit 
of the ones that want exactly and only what God wants. Only what God wants. No other criteria in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com.